Our today is Lyndon Johnson has been sworn in as the nation's 36th president. That famous picture was taken again by Cecil, Cecil Stoughton. That would be this fellow right here. He was the White House photographer who took the picture during the Kennedy administration. And he took the picture. So, finally, after the swearing in of Lyndon Johnson at 12.46 p.m., and as hard to believe as it is, we're still talking about the same day, one day in history, 2.46 p.m. p.m. 2.46 p.m. Air Force One finally takes off and departs for Washington, D.C. It has been a long day. So at 2.46 p.m., Air Force One departs for Washington, D.C. We have a new president sworn in, and we're going back to try to put together the pieces of this horrible day. At 3 o'clock... President Johnson has one of his aides called Rose Kennedy. Who's Rose Kennedy? The president's mother. So at 3 o'clock, President Johnson, and we refer to him now as President Johnson, asks one of his aides to get on the phone and call Mrs. Rose Kennedy. He wants to visit with the slain president's mother. And I'm just going to tell you the conversation. You don't have to write it down. So. The aide says, hey, I have Mrs. Kennedy on the phone. Linda Johnson says, Mrs. Kennedy. And she responds, gives me goosebumps, yes, Mr. President. She's already got the idea that her son has been killed and there's a new president. I, thought, I think that's just incredible. She responds, yes, Mr. President. And he says, I wish to God there was something that I could do and I wanted to tell you that we're grieving with you. Mrs. Kennedy responds, Yes, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I know, I know you loved Jack and he loved you. Well, at that point, President Lyndon Johnson, who was not a very emotional guy, got very emotional on the phone to the point where he had to give it to his wife, Lady Bird, so she could continue the conversation. And Lady Bird Johnson said to Mrs. Kennedy, she said, we are glad that the nation had your son as long as it did. And Mrs. Kennedy said, yes, Thank you so much, Lady Bird. Thank you very much. Goodbye. And Lady Bird finished the conversation by saying, love and prayers to all of you. Kind of an interesting time in history because Lyndon Johnson actually could not finish the conversation with Mrs. Kennedy. Well, finally, at 6 p.m., now this is Eastern Standard Time because everything else we've talked about has been Central Standard Time because it was in Texas. At 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Air Force One landed at Andrews Air Force Base in Washington, D.C. Now, there's a really interesting story to this. At 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Air Force One landed at Andrews Air Force Base in Washington, D.C. Who immediately boarded the aircraft when it landed? Robert Kennedy. As soon as that aircraft landed, he was the first on it. He immediately met Air Force One at Andrews, and when the aircraft landed, he was the first one. And his vision was clear. The Attorney General boarded the plane and immediately pushed his way to the back of the plane where Jackie was seated. That's all he had in his mind. So he meets the airplane there, he's the first one on the airplane, he immediately has tunnel vision, so to speak, and he goes directly to the back of the airplane where Jackie is sitting. He actually pushes right by the new president and didn't even look up to acknowledge that he existed. Pushed right by him. He was so tunnel vision focused on Mrs. Kennedy that he walked right by the new president, didn't even acknowledge him. Now, this was not good for President Johnson because he had a plan. He was a politician, always thinking. And he, his plan was that he and Mrs. Kennedy would exit the aircraft together with the body of the slain president. That's what Johnson thought was the most presidential. His plan was that he and Mrs. Kennedy and the body of the slain president would exit the aircraft together. Robert Kennedy was having no part of that. He basically snubbed the president, something that Johnson would never forget the remainder of his life. So what happens, and you'll see a video of it, a lift truck edges up to the open door of the aircraft and that bronze casket bearing the body of John Kennedy was unloaded from Air Force One 
and put into an ambulance to be taken for autopsy. No, Lyndon Johnson was nowhere near Mrs. Kennedy or that body. Yeah. Um, so do we still refer to Jackie as Mrs. Kennedy, or is it is, is it Miss? Well, she's she still, really still she's going to become Mrs. Mrs. Uh, Jackie Kennedy or Mrs. John F. Kennedy. She's no Mrs. longer the first. She's no longer the first lady. Yeah, but is she's it still Mrs. Mrs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you, yeah. In your widow. Yeah. Okay, so. Now. As I mentioned, the president's casket was placed in an ambulance. Also getting into the ambulance would be Robert Kennedy and Jackie Kennedy, and that president's casket was taken to, Beth to Bethesda Naval Hospital for the autopsy. Bethesda, Bethesda Naval Hospital for the autopsy. So the president's casket would be placed in an ambulance. Also in the ambulance would be Robert and Jackie Kennedy, and it was taken to Bethesda Naval Hospital for the autopsy. The reason they chose Bethesda, Bethesda Naval Hospital is because President Kennedy had been a naval officer, and that was his official hospital during his presidency. So if he had to go to the hospital for anything, he would go to Bethesda. Okay? Well, President Johnson kind of leaves the aircraft kind of perplexed to a bit after Kennedy's after the Kennedys had departed with the body, and he basically got off the airplane with Lady Bird and his entourage, which would include people like Jack Valenti that we talked about, and he gets off the aircraft. And at the tarmac where the aircraft lands is a place they set up for him to get his first speech as President of the United States. So at 6.10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Lyndon Johnson steps up to the podium at Andrews Air Force Base, not far from where Air Force One had landed and taken the slain president's body off and gave his first public speech as President of the United States. And this is what he said. He said, this is a sad time for all people. We have suffered a loss that cannot be weighed. For me, it is a deep personal tragedy. I know the world shares the sorrow that Mrs. Kennedy and her family bear. I will do my best. That is all I can do. I ask your help and God's. That's his first speech he ever gave as president. That would be a kind of a tough way to start. So anyway, that's the end of those notes. I'm going to show you a couple of videos now. I want you obviously to keep these notes and be responsible for them. I do not plan to test you on these notes. I plan on you having that information, which will be crucial to you once we talk about the interrogation. So I'm going to show you a couple things today. You might be wondering in your mind, I wonder what happened to that pink suit of Jackie Kennedy's after the assassination. I'm going to show you that. Then I'm going to show you another short that I think is very important. We all remember the husband that Jackie Kennedy lost on November 22, 1963. How many remember the husband that Marie Tippett lost? And that's it's a story on that. Very good. So anyway, I will. Uh, I'll show you those. I think. You